so I was brought here by a program called the American Film Showcase, and I can't remember the exact number of countries that they send film experts to, but um, it's, it's like over a hundred countries around the world that um, we are sent to meet with people who are making films, in my case, documentary films, because I'm a documentary filmmaker, and we do a mixture of training, we show films, and we also have a kind of cultural exchange. The program is funded by the U.S. Consulate and Embassy here in Pakistan, and I'm going to be spending about four days here in Karachi, and then I'll go to Lahore for two days, Faisalabad for two days, and I'm meeting with, you know, mostly people in college age, really, um, and I'm also going to be participating in panels. I'm doing a couple um, press um, events, and, um, and and I always try to make sure that I can sit down and just talk with filmmakers about what are you doing, what is it like for you to make films right now, and that's really why I like to go on this program is so that I can have an understanding of what filmmaking is looking like in a contemporary fashion all over the world. And um, I've been to Democratic Republic of the Congo, Indonesia, Greece, Thailand, here, um, and every country is incredibly different, and um, and it's a really interesting experience to be able to to be able to go around the world, and it's really a, an unusual opportunity. So I was a history major, and I studied international relations and political science. Um, I was interested in being a journalist. And it took me a little while to understand what documentary film was. Um, I started out as a 16 millimeter apprentice editor and then I became an assistant editor, like cutting film and putting it together. And that was how I began. And I just found it to be fascinating and this endless process of being able to like do a really deep dive on a subject and share what your experience of that subject matter is. I think that there's a misunderstanding that documentary film is objective, and I actually don't believe that at all. I think it's a highly subjective form. And I think my job is to share what my experience was someplace, or like what happened in an event that I took away from, and then tell that story through my own lens. So I've found when I'm doing um, documentary workshops around the world, um, as part of the American Film Showcase program. It's very similar no matter where you go. Um, I still think that there is some confusion about what documentaries are. And many people think that it's reality TV or they think it's only news talking heads and they haven't necessarily seen artful nonfiction films. So I'm really looking forward to showing some really interesting, beautiful, cool films to the students and exposing them to other types of films that they might ha not have seen before. And I find that to be necessary in the States, anywhere I go, it, documentary is still kind of breaking through to the mainstream. Yeah, unfortunately, documentaries don't have the same type of commercial potential that fiction projects do, um, whether that's series or one-offs. Um, and I think that has changed a little bit over the years because there's been a couple films that have done well, but when you look at like the biggest documentary film, the numbers are still tiny compared to looking at, you know, like big blockbuster films. So there's a, still a really big difference between them, but there are films um, that are showing theatrically sometimes in the States. They don't, I mean, every once in a while they do okay. And, and since the pandemic, it's been, devastating and that's not happening as much but there is a history of a few films that kind of pop out but the numbers are still pretty small in comparison. Um, I tend to only work on things that I love because it's so difficult and it takes such a long time to make these films. If I don't feel a very personal connection to the subject matter and motivated by something about the subject matter I can't pull it off. Um, my film, Walk Around Cha Cha, which ended up being a 20 minute short, I actually filmed that in a ballroom dancing studio for seven years. Um, and I was, I, I, that's not a shooting ratio anybody wants to replicate, but it's what I did. And so um, I just have to love it and I have to know that there's some type of a story there. Um, I've studied experimental film and I respect alternative modes of um, putting content together, but for myself, I, I'm interested in trying to find dramatic progression, I'm interested in trying to find character arcs, all the same techniques that are used in 
in fiction filmmaking. I apply those to making my documentary. My first feature-length film was a fiction film, and I was trained in how to work with actors, and um, I am also interested in kind of hybrid, which is something that's happening quite a bit now, where people are using um, fictional elements in their documentary films and kind of blurring what is what's true or what's not true, you know, using recreation, staging things. And I think as long as you're doing that in an ethical manner and you're not affecting causality, I think it ends up creating something really, really interesting. And I think some of the most exciting work that's being made all over the world right now follows that path. Well, I've just arrived and so I'm still learning what the filmmaking process is here, but it's clear that you have a film industry and it also seems to be heavily dominated by fiction film, not non-fiction film, which is also very true for everywhere in the world. Um, and I think that it's, it's a, clearly like it's a, it's a healthy, burgeoning, growing industry that has a lot of different voices in it and is, is aiming to represent like a really big cross-section of different parts of the country. Um, but what I've seen has been um, like very advanced and exciting. It's like clearly like on its, on its, on its way up. Recently I was really um, affected by the news of the flood here, um, which is clearly just at another level of severity and difficulty for people. And um, it was widely reported in the press, not as much as it should have been reported. Um, because it was really kind of a major global event. Um, but I think that you could not do enough about that story because we're going to keep seeing this happen as the effects of climate change become more severe all over the world. Um, so I don't think you can have enough coverage of that subject. Um, and I, I'm always a believer in showing the resilience of people to respond to these things and not get very focused on making films that admire a problem. We, we do that a lot, documentarians. Um, but there's a real opportunity to do a type of solutions-oriented storytelling where you can show people who are in the thick of trying to improve something and make it better. And I think that type of storytelling is the thing that gets people engaged rather than shutting down. That's what we face as documentarians. We have a, a kind of reputation as being the eat your vegetables films. You have to watch something that is supposedly good for you, but documentaries um, can inspire and be entertaining and, you know, basically cover the whole range of human experience just like fiction films can. Um, for anybody who wants to become a documentary filmmaker, I would advise them to learn everything they possibly can about storytelling. I would advise them to take um, film history seriously. I'm disappointed sometimes in how few films filmmakers watch. There's, pe there's some people who just make it their business to watch as much as they can, and then there's people who like only watch what they need to. and. I think the more versed you are in film history of any sort, and, and not just your own regional filmmaking, but from around the world, you have a tool set in front of you. you know, the more kinds of films you're watching, you see what the possibilities are. So I would say watch as much as you possibly can, and be, um, don't expect it to be easy sometimes to find those films, and get creative about how to find those films. Um, and um, be ready for the long haul, because it's not easy.